Normally, I don't like to talk about religion and spiritualism. If I touch anything that's religious, it's not about, oh, this church over here, or this church over there, or uh, unless of course someone is asking, <laughs> which often people don't. And one of the things that I do not exude, and this has taken me lots of practice, is I don't tell people, okay, these are the guidelines that I follow. These are the rules that I have. This creates my entire formula for my life. This is what God wants me to do in my life. Therefore, what's the matter with you? You need to be doing the same thing. You need to be following the same guidelines. You need to be doing all of this. If you don't, well, God doesn't love you. First of all, I've had people come up to me and say, that formula doesn't work. I'm sorry, did you live my life? Have you been through what I've been through? Have you gone through... How, do you live with my brain? Have you made my decision for me? Have you... Uh, have you paid my bills? Have you made an effort to be in my life consistently? Were you there when I was a child? Were you there when I became an adult? Where were you? Oh, you weren't there. Yeah. So, now who was there for me? Who was there for me my entire life? When I was a child and when I was an adult, God was. So I answer to God, I answer to him. I don't answer to anybody else. Now I will follow the laws of the land. You know, I won't murder, I won't steal, uh, I won't, uh, you know, attack anybody. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna follow the laws. I'm not a, a sovereign citizen, I, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. I will do what is expected of me which means yes if somebody says i should cross the street when the light turns green then i'll do that that's for my safety that's for the safety of my family and i will do whatever it is to keep myself safe and keep my family safe but I don't say that I have something that's superior to other people. I don't say that my spirituality or my relationship or the fact that I either don't go to church or that I go to church is what is, is better. What I do is I encourage people, if you feel that you need to be part of a church, you feel that you need to be part of or an organized religion to make you feel whole and that's what you need in your spiritual journey, then yes. Now, if it is keeping you from being the best person you can be and it's not helping you on your journey and it's not something that you feel that you need right now, then I say, don't. Whatever somebody is comfortable with, and there are some people who just don't, are not comfortable with a church setting. They're not comfortable with that. And I am more concerned of the soul of that person. I'm more concerned about how do they feel about it, you know? What, what do they see that they're going to get out of, out of going to this certain place or doing this certain thing? So I encourage people to do what's right. And if they, even, if they, even what they did wasn't right, you know? If, they, if what they did wasn't right, They'll figure it out. They'll find themselves. And that's the whole thing about spirituality. It's an individual journey. You find God in your own way. And I know a lot of people have probably told you that no, it has to be here, or it has to be there, or it has to be in this place. If you cannot find God within your home, within your heart, what makes you think that you're gonna find him in a building? God because of the Holy Spirit, he is everywhere.
I know that sounds pagan and sounds weird, Unitarian even, <laughs> but you know, I don't have any judgment against those who believe differently than me, whether they are Christians or not. Because let me tell you, I used to be a conservative Christian. I used to go to church. I used to greet people. I used to do, you know, the, the, the kid uh, stuff. You know, I used to manage, um, you know, the, the Sabbath school, so to speak, uh, for kids. And um, I used to live that way. I used to go home, get guilt tripped. I used to go to church, I'd get guilt tripped. And guilt was such a, a big part of my life that I thought, you know, that this guilt essentially was my friend. I thought it was warning me uh, to stay safe and to do the things that I needed to do. But really it was keeping me from being the best person I could be. I was not living a whole and happy life. I thought I was, you know, a Bible, reading my Bible every day, doing everything that, you know, going to church, helping out, you know, helping out those in need. And I did, oh my gosh, I was the golden child. I was the poster child. I was the, the church's, you know, greatest creation, so to speak, even though they didn't create me. But I was, I was it. And I was not happy. I limited myself in so many ways. And I judged so many people. When I let go of these judgments and I allowed myself to not only love others, but to love myself, I began to grow. I began to see people for the good, for the light. I even got to see the goodness in, 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 in the dark places. And I had this misconception, misconception that things were just black and white, light and dark, when all of us are, are light and dark. We are both, we can be good and still have a little bit of darkness. If you want to know what that darkness is, that darkness is our shadow. How many shadow isn't bad? That shadow, that darkness, is a reminder of what we've been through and where we've gone. That is the reaction of what we've gone through. And we need to embrace every part of us. Obviously, I mean, if we have, you know, if there's violence or there's there's these urges to do things that are wrong, you know, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't embrace that side of us. But if there's a part of us that maybe, maybe it's darker than the other parts, we can embrace it. And we can say, this is part of who I am. This is part of who I've become. And I'm not always in a good mood. Sometimes in a bad mood. Does that make me bad? No, 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 no. Darkness is very, we always associate it with something bad or something evil. And I'm not telling you embrace the good and the evil. I'm not doing Emperor Palpatine here. I'm not saying that we can both be good and evil. I'm saying is that a lot of us are good people, but we have dark sides. And sometimes these dark sides can actually help us out. They can help us out a bit. Because when you have suffer abuse, when you have trauma, you've gone through this incredible darkness, this dark side comes by, comes up and says, okay, we're not gonna put up with this. We're not going to do this. And really, it's not darkness at all. That darkness really isn't darkness. It is the warrior that has come forward out of the darkness, that is coming to say, I'm not gonna be, be abused anymore. I'm not gonna mess, I'm not gonna put up with this. I'm gonna be strong. I've been hurt before, I'm not gonna allow myself to be hurt again. And I will help other people heal from their hurt. That's what I mean when we embrace. We need to embrace everything that we are, even the mistakes. And we have to admit that we are human and we make mistakes. And it is okay to be wrong. We will be wrong consistently. 
and that's what I want to leave with you today and I hope this was helpful.